Toyota debuted a new hydrogen burning engine the company says holds big potential for the company, the industry and for global carbon neutrality goals. Automotive World says Toyota is doing this to fight EV mania, therefore this may be a good alternative to, to electric vehicles. If you remember in April 2022, about a month and a half ago, Toyota Motor Corporation announced that toward the achievement of carbon neural mobility society, it is developing a hydrogen engine. It had installed the engine on a racing vehicle based on Toyota's Corolla Sport, which it will enter the competition under the ORC Rookie Racing banner, starting with the Super Takiyu Series 2021, powered by Hankook Round. So let's see where we stand with all of these friends. Hans Grimmel from Automotive News has the details. Welcome back, dear friends. This is Armin Haryan from TalkNews.com. If you are here first time, please subscribe to our channel and ring the bell so you don't miss my next story. I have a very interesting story to tell you based on the details from Automotive World and Hans Grimmel has the details. It is a familiar racetrack scene, but this time Toyota has a new twist. The automakers, Petrol head president Akio Toyota is barreling down the straight at Fuji Speedway in a souped-up Toyota racer clocking 140 miles per hour with uh, thunderous engine growls and bone-rattling vibrations before slamming on the brakes to tuck into the corner. His tire smoking number 32 race spec Corolla looks, sounds and drives like any other car in the field. But there is one important invisible difference. While the rival racers are all burning gasoline, Toyota's engine is powered by hydrogen and it is churning out virtually no carbon dioxide. Note to distinction, it's not a silent hydrogen fuel cell under the hood, but a freshly mined hydrogen burning three banger. The engine is still just a prototype. But Toyota believes it holds big promise for his company, for the industry and for carbon neutrality in a world seemingly gone gaga over full electric vehicles, says Automotive World. His message here was as loud as the engine's red line well. Policymakers should uh, butt out of diction, um, dictating battery electric vehicles because myriad other technologies, including combustion, can be green and clean. The ultimate goal is carbon neutrality, Toyota said after completing the Fuji Super Tech 24-hour endurance race, where he rotated behind the wheel with five other drivers. It shouldn't be about rejecting hybrids and gasoline cars and only selling fuel cells and battery electric cars. We want to expand the choices available in the path to carbon neutrality. This is the first step. What is personally interesting for me, friends, is that do you think the electric vehicles are the only vehicles, only technology that can take us to carbon neutrality, that means free from oil? Maybe you can come up with something to build, uh, to burn hydrogen. So Toyota is working toward this, and we know that Toyota is also working for electric vehicles. So now uh, Automotive World's article continues saying, to skeptics, Toyota's May 22-23 run in the foothills of Mount Fuji may seem like a desperate last stand for a technology on deal watch, the, uh, on the, uh, dealt watch, on a big, on a fig leaf for Toyota's slow, seemingly reluctant shift into battery electric as competitor at home and abroad invest billions in electric vehicle only features. But seen another way, Toyota Motor Corporation is opening a new front in the war on greenhouse gas emissions. Toyota believes technological breakthroughs such as this one can give internal combustion a new lease on life, saving jobs as well as the environment. It is a debate over the best road to net zero carbon with a pushback against government mandates that reflexively phase out internal combustion in favor of electric vehicles. Toyota isn't doing this because it's behind in electric vehicles, said Takai Nakanashi, head auto analyst at the Nakanishi Research Institute. 
Toyota is doing this to save Japan's auto industry and its domestic supply chain. This is a performance by Toyota to influence policy in a better direction. End of the quote. Development of the new Toyota engine began in secret in 2016 and it was first shown to Toyota, Toyota in December. It is still a long way from mass production. The automaker has no concrete timeline. One rationale behind debuting the engine in the Corolla H2 concept at Fuji was showmanship. Toyota is so confident in the new direction that the 65-year-old president decided to unveil the engine by driving it himself in a 24-hour all-night race declaring its viability in a high-speed endurance setting. Without a doubt, bringing the car into this severe environment will speed up development, said Koji Sato, president of Toyota's Kazu Racing and global head of Lexus. Simply completing the grueling race was deemed a victory, even though the car spent 12 of the 24 hours in the pits, including 4-hour refueling. It finished 49th in the 51 car mixed class field, though it entered in a special class for development cars and winning wasn't the objective. Japanese journalists billed it as a historic run and cheered Toyota and his team, uh, actually cheered Akio Toyota and his team with rousing applause at a post-race press conference in Pitro. But commercialization of hydrogen engines faces many of the same roadblocks as hydrogen fuel cells. Pressurized hydrogen gas is expensive and the refueling infrastructure scant. And its carbon fiber on board fuel tanks are heavy and costly. And I don't know how Toyota is going to deal with these challenges. But Toyota is playing the long game, says Automotive World, AIing the Japanese government's goal of nationwide carbon neutrality in 2020, in 2050, which I have earlier said that may push Toyota even further to do either electric vehicles or something else, alternative to electric vehicles, but to carbon neutrality. We still have 30 years, Toyota said. 30 years ago, we didn't even have hybrids or fuel cell vehicles. It's not a good idea to narrow down our options now. Toyota has reasons, both pragmatic and patriotic, for championing internal combustion. As the head of Toyota, he can fully leverage the company's massive 10 billion research and development war chest to spread bets across a range of tomorrow's technologies. Toyota also wants a longer lifespan for the hybrid systems into which his company has sunk billions of dollars. Let me also say that I personally applaud Toyota's patriotic efforts. I think it's a good thing to love your country as we do ours. Meanwhile, as head of the Japan's Automobile Manufacturing Association, a post he has held since 2018, Akio Toyota wants a smooth transition into the electrification age for Japan's autom automakers and suppliers and are still wrapped, uh, that are still wrapped up in internal uh, combustion. Toyota notes that some 10,000 components go into an engine system, roughly a third of all of a vehicle's parts. Electric vehicles not only have fewer parts, they require fewer work hours to build. The concern is that a wholesale shift to electric vehicles could wipe out swath of suppliers and their jobs. That in turn could undermine the country's entire supply chain. So maybe Toyota needs to come up with something because Toyota and the Japanese suppliers and automakers still have 30 years to make this change in Japan. Now, the rush to battery electric vehicles is partly a response to government goals for net zero greenhouse gas emissions. That is an objective pursued by the European Union, China and South Korea, among other countries. Japan pledged to become a net zero emission society by 2050 and plans to phase out the sale of new vehicles powered solely by gasoline by the mid-2030s. Toyota says knee-jerk reactions are short-sighted. What Japan should do first is add technological options. I think regulations and legislation come next, he said at a recent event wearing his manufacturer's association chairman hat. 
engineers and workers involved in engine manufacturing would lose their jobs. We need to be practical and sustainable, he said. At risk are jobs tied to everything from piston rings, ignition coils and spark plugs to gearboxes and turbochargers. This month, Daimler CEO Ola Kalenius joined the chorus of concern about the switch of electric vehicles, uh, about the switch to electric vehicles, telling Reuters, quote, we have to have an honest conversation about jobs, end of the quote. Honda, Jaguar, General Motors, Ford, Mini and Volvo are among those making their portfolios heavily if not entirely electric EV oriented. Honda plans to completely drop combustion engines from all new vehicle sales by 2040. Toyota by contrast is taking a diversified approach. The automaker wants to sell 8 million electrified vehicles by 2030 but only 2 million will be fully electric. Um, full electrics or fuel cells. Among other future technologies, Toyota also is pitching electrofuels as a way to develop to deliver cleaner internal combustions. Friends, let me give you my personal opinion. I think it's a great thing that the industry is moving to electrification, but jobs are also important. Maybe while there is time, the automakers, the CEOs need to sit down and see where and how they create uh, alternative jobs to move the suppliers to become EV suppliers or in other areas. Otherwise, we will have millions and millions of people out of job in these industries. Now, hydrogen combustion engines could ease the transition to piggy banking and existing technologies. For the race, Toyota engineers modified the 1.6 liter three-cylinder turbocharged engine used uh, in the GR Yaris. They added a high-pressure injection system from Denso Corporation, adjusted the spark plugs, strapped on four hydrogen tanks, and connected it all with feeder lines. Toyota says the system is an improvement over earlier attempts at hydrogen combustion, delivering output powerful enough to compete in racing, previous industry attempts at hydrogen engines typically fell short on horsepower. Toyota's race engine had to have its output turned down from the GR Yaris 600, uh, 268 horsepower to cope with heat management issues. Mazda developed hydrogen burning versions of its trademark rotary engine in 1990s and early 2000s. Now, it was used in limited lease fleets of the Primacy Multipros uh, vehicles and RX-8 sports car, but the program faded away when Mazda shifted focus to its Skyactiv line of gasoline and diesel engines and electrifications. Ahead of the Fuji Speedway race, however, Mazda CEO Akira Marumoto signaled support for possibly reviving this technology to reduce carbon dioxide emissions, it is necessary to have a multi-solution using all kinds of electrification and carbon neural te neutral technologies, Marumoto said. We have the hydrogen engine as one such solution. We have already verified that the rotary engine and hydrogen are highly compatible. As such, he said, we would like to secure our hydrogen engine technology as one solution. So hydrogen engine may be a solution to uh, as an alternative to electric vehicles. And uh, I would like to see what you think, friends, about this development, about Toyota's alternative way of uh, kind of working toward uh, fighting kind of EV mania, uh, Toyota's concerns, Toyota's patriotism and Toyota's uh, job concerns, which is also shared by um, Daimler's uh, CEO. Um, in the meantime, this is Armin Haryan from TorqueNews.com. Please subscribe to our channel channel for daily electric vehicle and industry news. Ring the bell, share in social media. Please give us thumbs up if you found this report helpful. Have a great day and come back later to uh, see some more very interesting Tesla breaking news. See you soon. God bless you. Peace be with all of you.